How's it going? My name is Logan Reese. I'm here with Adrian H Hutchins, our head track and field coach for both the men's and women's, and Miss Lisa Williamson from Financial Aid here at Emmanuel College. And we're going to tell you guys about some of the events going on throughout Emmanuel Athletics, uh, both what's happened recently and what's coming up. Exciting weekend this weekend. Always in February, crossover season. We got the winter sports wrapping up, conference championships going on, coming up, and all the spring sports getting into full gear. So, Miss Lisa, you want to start us off by telling us about the, the bowling team? Sure. Uh, they had some strong results at Florida State University, and they'll be traveling to Indiana Vers University this weekend, my home state. So, I uh, grew up at the bowling alley. So excited to see how they do. Oh, nice. Were you a bowler yourself? No, my my dad and my husband. Okay, so you're you're familiar with this sport at least. I am. Awesome, awesome. All right, Adrian, tell us what's happening in women's wrestling. Uh, women's wrestling. Um, the last regular season event it was at Limestone Open. Um, I believe they performed very well. Coming up next, they have the NCAA regionals at King University. Um, hopefully, they can come out and be some strong lions and continue to improve on their performances. Yeah, and then men's wrestling coming off a big win over Huntington College, 36 to nine. They dominated them to finish off their regular season and they'll have conference next weekend. That'll be hosted by UNC Pembroke. So you can catch all that on the Conference Carolina's digital network if you want to follow along and see what's going on. And then what about baseball? baseball. They've been a lot going on. A bounce back from a couple of losses, Eckerd in West Georgia. They won the last four games, three versus Limestone, and last one at Anderson. Conference opener this weekend at Mount Olive. Yeah, so it's going to be always a tough one at Mount Olive, but they're, they're going to be kicking it off there. And five and four come, heading into the weekend. So a lot of tough opponents that they played in their out-of-conference play. So coming out with a winning record as they get ready for conference play is certainly a great start. And facing the Trojans. A lot of, a lot of Mount Olive uh, competition yesterday, today, tomorrow. We'll, we'll get into a little more of that, but you want to tell us about, about softball? Um, Coach Fagan and the Lady Lions, they split the series with Georgia College this past weekend. Um, their next game, they'll be traveling to Lander for a tournament. Actually, this weekend, they'll be playing USC Beefert, um, Lincoln Memorial, Carson Newman, and Lenore Ryan. So hopefully the softball team can come out with w more wins than losses. Yeah, absolutely. They're going to be starting conference play before too long as well. And then swimming, conference championship going on right now. Men's and women's swimming continuing to dominate. Last year, men's and women's swimming both took home the championship. The men won by over 400 points. Jeez. And both of them have more than 40 point leads at this point for Jeez. two days. <laughs> two more days to go and records are being shattered left and right uh, some relay records the men set a new conference record in the uh, it was the 200 free and honestly i never thought relay. i never thought yeah the 200 free relay i never thought that record would be broken we had a, a phenomenal time years ago back when we had alex sovers and and igor and zhao i mean legends those guys put together unbelievable splits where they're all sub 20 on the 50 and for those of you that know anything about swimming, that is just incredible times. To have four people that can all go sub-20 is mind-blowing. And somehow that record was beaten. They did it again. Uh, a minute 20 was their relay time. And then also, the, the women set a, a conference record as well. Uh, Susanna Ungo specifically set her, her own record, 200 IM. And I think, uh, I believe we held the record before. Don't remember who exactly, but Susanna beat that beat that record. So records falling left and right. Men's women's swimming continuing to dominate, and you know ever since ever since we we became eligible for postseason play in Conference Carolinas, either men's or women's swimming has won a title every year. Can we say it's something in the water? <laughs> <laughs> something in the water. So, it, yes, sir. Something in the water down here, going on. The first year women's swimming won. The year after men's swimming won. The year after women's swimming won. That was a heartbreaking year. Had a DQ on the men's side or else the men yeah. would have won as well. But then last year, men's and women's swimming won. And now this year, can they follow it up? We'll see. Anyways, you want to tell us about men's lacrosse? Sure. Coach Bo uh, Burt's men dropped a tough one at Lander and looking to bounce back this weekend at Tusculum. Sounds good. And then 
What about on the women's side? Uh, women's lacrosse. Coach Little, this week they went one and one. They opened up the season opener with a win. Um, next, they'll be taking a break this week, but they will travel to Shorter next week where they can hopefully put the pieces together and bring home another win also. Sounds great. And then, do you want to tell us about men's volleyball? Sure. Um, uh, they bounced back from two top, tough losses. The first one at King, and then at Lee's Les McRae. They won a five-set thriller versus Limestone, and currently undefeated at home, 3-0. and Yeah, if you missed it on Wednesday night, the, the game against Limestone was a thriller. Now, four consecutive games. Emmanuel Men's Volleyball has beat Limestone going back a couple years and Limestone has a great program. Finished last year they started off the season 7-1 and one, and their only loss in their first eight games right here. We handed it to them. <laughs> knocked them down. This year they're playing great again. Uh, they were 6-4 and four coming into the night and then we just knocked them down in five. A lot of fun so I'm sure the Saints are starting to, starting to despise the Lions a little bit but but we love it. All right, you want to tell us about women's basketball, Adrian? Uh, Coach Bonna and the women's basketball team have broken their losing streak, and they earned a nice win at North Greenville the other night. So congratulations, ladies, for that. They have two games left on their schedule. Excuse me? They won by 30 points. In 30 North points. Oh. 30 points. So that, that's a pretty good butt kicking. Um, they have two games left on their regular schedule. They are both here at the Shaw Athletic Center. This weekend versus UNC Pembroke, who is 16 and 2, so this will be a good challenge for them. Also, a good test um, to bounce back and continue on their success. Um, they're currently number four in the conference standing. Um, with the win at Pembroke, I'm pretty sure that they can improve and move up in the conference standing as well. Awesome. And then on the men's side, if you missed it last night, absolute thriller. 17 and a half minutes left in the first half. The Lions trailed 53 to 37. We're down 16 with 17 minutes left. And guess what? 105 to 104. Wow. Emmanuel came out on top. Somehow, we scored 35 points in the, in the first half, 70 points in the second half. KJ Jones doing what he does. He got in foul trouble early in the first, had to sit out much of the first half, only had three points in the first half. Second half, what does he do? Oh, he turned What's he do? On. 33 points. 33. Finishes with 36. He's averaging 26.1 points on the season. That is one and a half points more than anyone else in Division II. Out of the thousands of men's basketball players in Division II, he's averaging a point and a half more than anyone. And also across all divisions of the NCAA, he is second. There's one dude in D1 that's averaging 27. Out of the thousands and thousands of players across all divisions, he is second. And of course, leading the way in D2. And they will be playing. So now men's basketball on a 12-game win streak. They lost their first game of 2023 against Barton right here. But since then, 12 straight victories. And tomorrow it's the biggest game of the season. Number one in the conference, UNC Pembroke. Emmanuel, obviously, number two. That'll be right here at 4 p.m. for men's basketball. Pembroke is currently ranked fifth in the nation. They're 24-1 and one on the season. Their only loss was in December to, to Francis Marion. And Emmanuel and Pembroke both have now two of the three or four longest win active winning streaks in Division II. So out of the 300 men's basketball programs, Emmanuel and Pembroke have two of the longest active win streaks. Pembroke, I, I think they're up to 17 or 18 games now that they've won in a row. And Emmanuel, of course, 12 in a row. So in my opinion, D2 game of the week tomorrow. It's going to be right here. Make sure you come out and support the guys. If not, catch it on the Conference Carolinas Digital Network. But thank you for... Tuning in, we'll be back in just a moment for more on the manual athletics.
And welcome back once again. This is Logan Reese along with Miss Lisa Williamson and Adrian Hutchins, head men's and women's track coach. And now we're going to turn a little bit more specifically to talk about track and field and Coach Hutchins here. So, Miss Lisa, you want to ask him uh, the first question? Sure. Adrian, you're a first time head coach. What is the biggest challenges you are facing right now? Um, first, I want to say thank you to Emmanuel College for having me as the coach. Um, but I would say the journey um, for me. Sometimes I get caught up on last year's success um, and trying to hurry the process of running fast, jumping high, throwing far. Um, but sometimes I always have to remind myself it's not the success that's the most important part, but it's the journey, um, the obstacles that we overcome, and the moments that make us an actual stronger team. Nice. So you guys are consistently finishing top five in the conference on both the men's and women's side. and produced some All-Americans, three All-Americans last year, mm -hmm. of course. Uh, so what's the secret? What's the secret to that success? Um, there's really no secret. Uh, we just have athletes who are really dedicated to their craft. Um, that's the biggest thing um, because who wants to get up and run every day? You know, to have that discipline and to be motivated to get up every day, run, jump, um, throw, um, and do your best that you can that day, I think that's the secret is just the dedication and the motivation um, of self. Nice. All right, Miss Lisa, what you got for him next? All right. You always put a lot of hours on campus, uh, not only in practice, but helping your athletes and peers. Uh, can you tell us something about that? Oh, absolutely. Servant leadership um, is the way to go. You know, a guy who I follow on campus is Coach Katan. Um, watching him work a lot of hours sometime sleeping in the training room um, and traveling back and forth just to get to work. I think he's one of those guys who are idle and we understand that sacrifices have to be made um, in order to do what we do. Um, to continue on with that, I try to put myself in, in the athlete's shoes um, and be the best coach for them. Um, so at the same time, I want to continue to create a championship culture um, amongst those peers because coming from Tiffin University, um, being a national champion, having that national championship culture, um, I know it leads to more success, not only on the track, but in the classroom as well. Nice. Well, tell us about your your time as a national champion. What, what sport? <laughs> okay, because I know you played three sports in college. This man played, he did, well, he didn't play. He ran track, <laughs> I did. he played basketball, and he played football. Yes, sir. Wow. So which one of those were you? Were you guys national champions in? Uh, track and field. Uh, awesome. my, my first passion was always football. Uh, lost a couple of teeth. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but track and field, um, thanks to Jeremy Croy, who was my head coach at Tiffin University, um, continuing trying to be like him and walk in those steps of how he built this program. Uh, because when I first got there, I cannot say we were the best program. Then we got an indoor facility, an indoor track and field um, that improved our numbers and the talent that we were able to get in our program, which led to two national championships back to back and then a couple third place finishes and then more national championships. Well, that's incredible. So speaking of indoor, uh, yes, in sir. indoor conferences coming up very soon. So can you give us a little, little sneak preview? Little pre uh, I don't want to say too much, um, but conference is definitely going to be um, one of a higher caliber this year. Not having the athletes that we had last year, but we do have some athletes who should score in the top three. Um, not quite all American status this year, but we do have some conference champions. Um, I'm really hoping that will come out this weekend. Um, along with that, you know, with the teams, um, score high, uh, compete, um, and just do our best. Awesome. All right, Miss Lisa, you want to ask him the next question? Sure. Uh, you are quickly shifting from indoor to outdoor season. Can you tell us some of the key differences in the expectations you have for the season? Yeah, um, so my expectations don't change. Um, I still want to compete for a conference championship in the long run. Um, and I want my guys and my girls to compete at the highest level. Um, the difference between indoor and outdoor you know, is more events outdoor. So um, the athletes will have a more versatile um, plate of options to do for events. Uh, my throwers can do more throwing events more sprinting events and more teamwork events because you have relays as well opposed to indoor. Um, it's a team individual sport, if that makes sense. Um, but we look to continue on that um, and just improve on our times and our marks 
uh, run faster, throw, throw farther, jump higher. Fair enough. So going back to those, those three All-Americans from last year, of course, Sully Bangura, Jarnay Alston, and Rene Battle. What's something you learned from them that you're going to apply as you go forward coaching? Because I know us as coaches can often learn stuff from our athletes. So what, what did you learn from those, those All-Americans that you're going to apply in your coaching going forward? Patience. Um, with, with every great thing, it takes patience. Um, it's a process to everything and just having the faith and the trust in God that things will break through when they're supposed to. So being patient on our journey, being patient on our walk, and that allowed them to get to the highest of the highest level, the Mecca of track and field. Um, but their work ethic was, was crazy. So learning not only the good, the, seeing the good days, but seeing the bad days as well and being able to um, be coachable and myself be coachable. So they taught me a lot as well. Um, so in that moment, I was able to be more of a listener than an actual coach. So not putting all of the focus on myself, letting them have the floor, letting them have more control, uh, which allowed them to get to their highest level. So most of your coaching background, I know, is, is specifically in jumping, and jumping is, is your specialty. So what's been what's been a challenge for you, and, and what, are you, what are you doing to, to help out the sprinters when jumping is your main specialty? Um, the challenge for me is the, the time I, I don't get to spend with my jumpers because my heart is in jumping. Um, but for sprinters, you know, reaching out in my coach's network, going on YouTube, studying videos, talking to previous sprinters um, and, my, and my coaches network, sending videos, getting critiques of what things we need to do to improve on those things. Um, my next step will be actually going to sprinter school so I can have the background to be a sprints coach. So continuing my professional development and getting more so rounded as a track coach and not just a jumps coach. All right, so speaking of development, who's the biggest mentor to you whether it's current or or in the past, who's made the biggest influence on your on your coaching? Um, I have quite a few. Um, one person that motivates me would be Et the Hip Hop Preacher. Um, everybody want to be a beast till it's time to do what beasts do. Uh, I know, I know, we all know that quote. But in my personal, I would say uh, my mentor from high school, Emmanuel Curtis, who was also uh, my high school track coach, um, and he's been with that program for over 15 years. Uh, Frank Highland. Um, Jeremy Croy, Kevin Keen, um, Antonio Wells, um, and it's it's a long list of, of people who have poured into me, so I'm able to pour into my athletes. Nice. Right, so what do you what do you want your legacy to be at Emmanuel College? If if someday we, we hang a plaque in the gym with Adrian Hutchins on it, what do you want it to say under your name? <laughs> um, that's a great question. That's something I honestly have not thought about. Um, I, I want the legacy just to speak for itself. Um, so I, I know I still have a lot of work to do. I don't want to speak too soon, um, but I want my accomplishments to match up with um, my words. So I'm not going to speak about that yet. Maybe we can revisit this conversation in 20, 30 years <laughs> if, if the Lord allows it. Um, but definitely want to remain humble um, throughout this process the whole time. All right. Sounds great. Thank you, Adrian. Thank you. Coach Hutchins, Miss Lisa, thank, thank you. you. This has been all three of us on Logan Reese with Emmanuel Athletics. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.